uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel on Bushkin. Today we're going to be talking about patterns of behavior in PUBG Mobile, more specifically uh, how they can help you improve your gameplay. There's a lot of randomness, like I ran out of shotgun ammo there and that bloke managed to get away because I ran out of shotgun ammo and the game became a lot harder because of that and then everything cascades out of control from there. I understand that's that's the the incredible chaotic nature of PUBG Mobile. But there is a lot of stuff that's, if not predictable, at least likely to happen. And when you have gunfights and situations that are absolutely uh, diabolically tough and crucial to win, then this kind of thinking can really help you pull the uh pull the pull it out of the fire let's talk about this anyway um and you see a lot of this stuff is going to be uh really tense gunfighting situations like hot drops and the like because those are the the situations where this really comes to the fore i also want to say that i've been playing a lot of tpp lately and there are a lot of players in TPP that just do not know how to gunfight. They get ranking, like this is a hot drop where I screwed up, there's a full squad inside. And what I'm gonna do is wait for someone to try and loot this weapon down the back here. This is something you can do. Uh, if you don't have a gun and you're absolutely up against it, and while that guy drops a gun or changes weapons, whatever, on the hot drop, then you sneak out from behind cover and grab it and that's your chance now it's a minimal chance and it doesn't always work but that's a perfect example of a pattern of behavior we all land on a hot drop and if there's no one in front of us our first thought is get a gun get a gun get a gun get a nicer gun get a shinier gun get a gun that i want to use in final circle and move on and we kind of get fixated into that another thing is this here you'll see that bloke over there this is common in tpp a lot of people in tpp will do this they will completely empty out a clip all you got to do is get in the cover. So the guy's coming up here, right? He starts firing. Stand behind the tree. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you very much. I would like to reply now. Back to our hot drop where we've just no just knocked um, that bloke out with the pink dress or whatever it was. Um, this is very, 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 very specific about hot drops. Uh, this kind of footage. But it's also a lot about the video I did yesterday, which was about patience and, and grace under pressure uh, if you are on a hot drop and you've nutted everyone in the squad they will be furious right because you've sent everyone back to the lobby bar one guy and they tend to take that very poorly i know i certainly do uh, so i'm fast forwarding through all this but the, the essence here is that i just take my time uh, I wait, a bot turns up, I take his gear, I take a couple of painkillers, I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait. He's still down there, he's still down there, he's still down there. He's now coming around, he's pushing around through the stairs. He's gonna actually run straight by me. Uh, and that's the end of him. Now, same drop. This is the most obvious, predictable pattern of behavior. There's a bloke over there looting, his buddy turns up. Um, I, I see this so often especially in TPP, because in TPP, elevation means you get an overlook on everyone without being visible yourself, right? In FPP, it never works like that because you have to expose yourself to be visible. So when I push down here on this guy who's now looting the box of his buddy, he takes off. What generally happens here is if they're close to a five stack, they'll run on the roof. If they're close to here, he's gonna go for the roof. So instead of he throws a molly, that's just a delaying tactic. All I do is I go over here and I set up for exactly where I think he's going to go, which is try and climb on the roof. And lo and behold, they just love it. It's like it's like flies to poop. Like they they can't get enough of it. Uh, everyone talks about having an angle and and holding an angle. And what they mean what they mean there is main. What they mean um, is they're basically saying you know you you're, you're covering off a spot in the map that gives you an advantage. So when someone has an angle on you, you've got to change the angle. That's all there is to it. There's a bloke over here who was holding an angle. Uh, now, however, I've come from a completely separate part of the map, and we've got an easy kill. That's it's. People are very predictable. Like, there's a UAS there. If you leave a UAS outside a house and there's an open door, you are obviously inside that house. You're probably in that doorway there or that window there because people love to peek windows. And this is FPP and you can't peek a window from behind a wall. So you're going to be next to it and voila. Uh, bad luck, Louvre Marud. Um, 
this is, it's just, this is terrible. This is funny, but terrible. Um, that's a bot. I'm going to let the bot go in there. Everyone's going to beat it because they want to get the kill. And then I just slide in behind it and slice everyone. But this last guy looks like he's an insta, right? But it wasn't. The guy behind him just bled out. So I was reloading when the fourth guy came out. So I nailed three and missed out on the fourth, which was very, very unfortunate. Uh, this is a revive situation. We're just going to get knocked just as he picks up an M416. I'm going to knock the bloke that gets him with the deagle. We, we're just going to do really well here. He drops the M416 immediately with ammo for me. But the other guy in the squad is waiting for me to start reviving Azza so that he can get the both of us. And I'm expecting this. So I'm going to start the revive, but I'm also going to make sure that my gun is pointing down the other end because people are predictable. Like... This is a situation he thinks he can turn to his advantage. But to be honest, I mean, we're behind cover and he's going to have to get out in the open to get a, a free and clear shot. And it actually favors us. And we get Weijer up with like one hit point left on his thing. Clutching out for Weijer. He's done it for me plenty of times. Why wouldn't he? Uh, now let's talk about that situation reversed. This is where I'm actually going to start. One of the, like, people in TPP can be very, very passive. This is me third partying a squad fight at a Villa Hot Drop. They are all going ham. You can see smoke's popping up in the middle, gunfire, knocks. It's all happening. I'm just like, righto. Well, if no one's coming near me, I can see the footsteps. You got no time for me. I'm just going to keep looting up, get all my, all my ammo and gear in. in in its, in its place, get a helmet on. Okay, let's begin. And you're going to see there's a guy in blue on the right here that pops. And I start shooting him immediately. The reason for this... Well, if you start thirsting buddies, they're on all... They're on all chat now, just like... He's on me, he's on me, I'm dying! Oh my god, I'm dying! Come and save me, save me, save me! It's just like crazy. All the green flame smokes go up. And it puts huge amounts of pressure. Like you saw with Ouija, where I had to go to Azza. There was no other place I could go. Because if I didn't, he was going to die. And I've got to clean up, sorry. Clear up your dinner. Um, finally, let's talk about uh, Picardo Arena specifically. This, uh, this arena is one of my favorite hot drop spots in the game when I'm playing TPP. Um... Boot camp is just usually pretty horrible dropping TPP. People get in buildings and they uh, then hold their window and it gets very, very stagnant. Picardo Arena, um, with the multiple levels and the easy access to those stairways, is great for third-party peaking and people will push these corners. Now, this is very predictable and you get to rise up. Now, that's like a desync situation where the guy coming up has a massive advantage because the guy overlooking, it's very hard to see down, but the guy coming up gets to see absolutely bloody everything. And that's that's a huge advantage. There's now, now a guy pushing and using sound cues. I know he's there, so I'm just going to get a shell in the... Here we go. Yep, excellent. Uh, lovely little bit of work with the shoddy. Now, let's talk about the predictable nature of some of this stuff. Uh, when you've got... Actually, I think... Hang on. Let me edit that. Um, right. So, we'll cut that bit out there because we don't want to show you... I kill a couple of bots. Great stuff. Uh, here's, here's what I want to say. There's multiple guys pushing me during this next little sequence. Generally, if they're halfway decent, people will not all push in the one direction at one time. Um, this is how you can basically farm up YouTube content, okay? So when people are pushing you, they will, the general consensus is that they won't um, all push one direction. They'll kind of try and envelop you or flank you, all that kind of stuff. Quite often, good squads, the best part about them is they'll just iron fist you. They'll take four guys and push you all at once. So you just can't clear the hit point pools. But there's a bunch of guys outside at the moment and they're all changing angles and trying to do things so what you'll see me do here is um i'll actually bugger off to the opposite side of the picardo arena because i feel fairly certain that there will be someone attempting to flank me um and this is so common for me that uh, i i don't feel like it's I don't feel like it gets talked about enough. People will try to be way too clever at times. And it's, it's all about changing angles. But if you're changing angles and you're putting like 60 meters between you and your teammates, um, what generally will happen is you're going to get thirsted. Uh, you're going to get killed and then thirsted. Or they're going to have to completely abandon all hope and push really, really hard 
because you have absolutely nutted their mate and they've now got to come screaming down like death incarnate just so that they can stop you from thirsting their buddy, which is exactly what's happening here. Now, I should point out that most of the games I've been playing this season in TPP are, are, are Miramar, and there's always the case for me because I, I don't... Snake. Um, there's... I don't know if you know this. There's an achievement you get like where you do uh, 15,000 crouches, 15,000 um, jumps, 15,000 prones where you lie down. And I don't have that after playing every single season. I still don't have 15,000 or 5,000 prones. I'm like... I'll never get it because I just don't lie down and snake. And if you don't lie down and snake, then uh, you're not going to do real well on Sanak and Erangel in the final circles. Because I I just think the mechanic is boring. It, the gameplay is boring. And you get great final circles on Miramar where people actually have to engage in gunfights. And on Sanok and Erangel, you get these final circles where people just sweat it up, lying on the ground, hoping the circle comes to them. And when it doesn't, they just crawl towards it. Like... I'd rather eat my own legs than snake. Um, so I don't, but you can enjoy it. <laughs> Until next time, please subscribe. We're trying to get to 100K, guys. Uh, share the videos. Uh, look after yourselves and stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.